I'm sitting in the car waiting for my driver to come as we clear customs to enter Ghana. Ghana, the country known as the Gold Coast in the early colonial days and in modern times, probably the most famous Ghanaian is Kofi Annan, or was Kofi Annan. Here's a little fact about Kofi Annan. He was an incredibly junior official in the United Nations, went home where his father was involved in government, and magically became the tourism minister, and a couple of years later went back to the UN in a very senior role. It's part of his background he doesn't talk about, and you've got to research really hard to find. Anyway, Ghana, the Gold Coast. Hi, and welcome to Black Star Square in Accra, Ghana. It's called Black Star Square because black represents the Africans and the star represents the star of hope. Why? Because Ghana was the first country in sub-Saharan Africa to gain its independence and then drove the Pan-African movement and set the example for the rest of Africa. So in a way, decolonialism started here. So this statue at the edge of Black Star Square represents the unknown soldier or the lone soldier, but not the normal unknown soldiers you see in France, Australia and in other places commemorating those who died in war. This soldier commemorates a couple who died after the war. See, the Ghanaian soldiers volunteered to help defend the British Empire in World War II in return for the promise of payment and support. So on the 28th of February, 1948, Soldiers marched down towards the British Army base, down that way, demanding what they were promised by the British Empire. And in return, the British soldiers opened fire and killed them. So the unknown soldier represents the soldiers who died trying to assert from the British government the rights they were promised. The British government in return said, thanks for helping save our empire, bang, you're dead. No wonder there's residual distrust of white people here. Welcome to the Mausoleum and Museum celebrating the life of President Nkrumah, the first president of Ghana. President Nkrumah was a leader in the Pan-African movement and a leader in the independence movement through the 1950s. And when Ghana became the first independent country in sub-Saharan Africa in 1957, President Nkrumah became the first national president and leader of a Pan-African movement. In a way, he represented that in his personal life as well having married an Egyptian. Now the mausoleum itself is shaped like an upside down sword to represent peace and like a tree trunk to represent work begun but not finished. Not finished because Nkrumah was overthrown in a military coup in 1966. Now Nkrumah is actually well known for when the Queen visited Ghana in 1961 and when the Queen decided to dance with President Nkrumah it caused such a stir in Britain because the Queen was dancing with a black man and it was seen in Africa as a comment from the Queen that she is going to treat the Commonwealth countries as equals. So Nkrumah has a lot to be proud of. And this blue Cadillac was a gift from JFK to President Nkrumah and it was his first presidential car. It was bulletproofed in Bulgaria and there's something ironic about President Kennedy giving another president a bulletproof car. Ghana derives its name from the pre-colonial kingdoms and getting rid of the colonial era name Gold Coast, something that Cote d'Ivoire has not done. Now Ghana was known as the Gold Coast because the principal trade from Ghana in colonial days was gold. It still is gold and petrochemicals in the colonial days. Yes, there was some slave trade here, but the principal trade was gold. And this place, the Cape Coast Castle, is one of a number of fortifications along the Ghana coast that is now protected in World Heritage listed by UNESCO because of its historical role. It started its life actually back in the 1600s as a timber shack built by the Swedes as a trading outpost. I've been to a few of these slave castles over the years in different countries and it doesn't matter how often you come when you think of what it would have been like to exit the slave dungeon, walk down the ramp through the door of no return to be put on board a ship and never come back again. A life of servitude and slavery awaited if you survived the voyage. I can never get over the capacity human beings have to be evil to each other. Given that this is called the Gold Coast, I'd love to show you some gold, but that's all in a different part of the country. So maybe I'll just call it Fish Coast.
thankfully fishing has taken over from slavery as the main industry here. So from a former slave trading town to a fishing village, this is where I'll say goodbye from Ghana. But what's next will be one of the richest men in human history and one of the largest empires ever. And you're gonna have to watch the next video for that because hint, it's not in Europe, it's in Africa.